In the midst of war with the Romulan Star Empire, Starfleet Command would begin to look for ways to turn the tide of that war in their favor. And one of their answers? The NX class refit. But what do we know about this updated Starship design? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the NX class refit, a design made canon in Season 3 of Star Trek Picard to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Please note, this video is an update to an older one I made, as a number of you good trinaries have requested that it be redone due to the changes in canon that Star Trek Picard has brought forward for the class. And as a result of that series, this video will be ignoring the series finale of Star Trek Enterprise, as most of fandom has done anyhow, chalking up any discrepancies to that episode's hollow writers taking artistic liberties within that holographic program. And of course, as always, because this is just a beta canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The Romulan Star Empire was a constant thorn in Earth and the Alpha and Beta Quadrant sides. In 2156, when yet another plot to destabilize Earth's growing influence in galactic politics was uncovered, Starfleet Command had no choice but to declare war against this aggressive foe. Mobilizing all available starships, Starfleet began to patrol the systems they felt most vulnerable on the borders of Romulan space. Starfleet Command had a problem though. While having stepped up their construction of starships, they simply did not have enough vessels in the fleet to win an all-out war. To combat this disadvantage, Starfleet Command began pulling vessels out of mothballs, giving them a quick refit and update, and sending them off to the front lines ready for battle. Though this did slow the Romulan advance somewhat, by 2157, Starfleet Command was losing vessels faster than they could replace them. To bolster their lines, other races such as the Andorians and Tellarites would send limited supplies and starships back to their human allies. Even the Vulcan High Command would assist Earth, stationing their own cruisers around Earth colonies in an effort to dissuade Romulan attacks in those systems. Jonathan Archer, captain of the first NX-class starship NX-01 Enterprise, was put in charge of the entire war effort. And he quickly realized that Starfleet needed a much better plan to win that war. Visiting Starfleet's engineering and scientific advancement facilities, he was amazed to discover that Starfleet's Corps of Engineers believed they had broken the Warp 7 barrier, creating a totally new Warp Core technology that could revolutionize Starfleet forever. The problem, however, was that although this technology was ready to be tested, there simply wasn't a starship design capable of holding this new technology and its related systems. But where Starfleet saw a problem, Captain Archer saw an opportunity. Gathering Starfleet's top starship design engineers, he immediately commissioned them to design an easily constructed addition for the NX class that would incorporate all the new technological breakthroughs, including the much more powerful Warp 7 core. A few months later, construction of this new secondary hull was completed and attached to the NX-02 Columbia, which had been in space dock receiving extensive repairs while the NX-01 Enterprise continued to fight on the front lines. In order to save time and to get Columbia back into the fight as soon as possible, the Warp 5 core would remain integrated into this new refit class. Although hastily cobbled together, this new design was an elegant evolution of the NX class lineage, integrating shield emitter technology given to Starfleet by the Andorians, 
the design engineers decided to have both cores operate in tandem. The Warp 5 core powering the new shield system technology, while the new Warp 7 core would handle maneuverability, speed, and weapon systems. This dual core system would become a major contributing factor to Earth winning the war. Forgoing a standard shakedown cruise, Captain Erica Hernandez and the crew of the Columbia had a trial by fire. When Starfleet Command received reports that a Romulan armada had set a course to attack the newly established Deneva colony. Assembling as many starships as they could in the system, a mere seven Starfleet vessels and two Vulcan warships, the NX-02 raced to the system at warp factor 6.7 and arrived just in time for the Columbia to take control of fleet operations. Facing down 28 Romulan starships, the odds of victory seemed unlikely for Starfleet. However, with Columbia at the forefront of the Starfleet task force, these odds quickly changed in Starfleet's favor. Thanks to her new shield technology powered by its own core, along with the newly invented Mark II photonic torpedo systems, the NX-02 herself became an unstoppable force, destroying half of the Romulan Armada itself before the Armada could even get close to Deneva. As a result, the Romulan Star Empire pulled back its remaining starships from the Deneva attack, fortifying the borders of their own territory while they searched for a countermeasure to the new Starfleet shield and weapon technologies. Hailed as a complete success by Starfleet and its allies, the NX-02 would be sent to the Romulan border for patrol duty, while the NX-03 Challenger and the NX-05 Atlantis returned to Earth to receive a similar upgrade. The NX-01 Enterprise herself would be the last vessel to receive the refit, as Captain Archer wanted to remain on the front lines until he felt that the border to Romulan space could be adequately defended tactically while his vessel was in dry dock. Romulan warp drive technology was quite primitive compared to that of Earth's. And even though Romulan intelligence forces had acquired detailed schematics of many alien warp drive systems, the Praetor's arrogance had prevented them from using those stolen technologies. As a result, Romulan warp drives tended to leak Delta radiation, a situation which prevented Romulan crew members from serving long term on any Romulan vessels as the cumulative effect could be deadly. But now, with the war turning to humanity's favor, and the Andorians, Tellarites, and Vulcans seemingly ready to join the war effort on Starfleet's side, the Praetor would finally authorize construction of human-designed warp drives to be temporarily installed into their starships. And once this fleet was ready, the Romulan Star Empire would bet their entire survival on a single battle in the Charon system. It was a brilliant plan. The Romulan Star Empire leaked information to Starfleet Intelligence that the Romulans were building a brand new, highly advanced starbase in the Charon system, and subsequently would be using this base as a launching point to attack and destroy Earth itself. This would force Starfleet Command to muster all available starships in a desperate attempt to destroy the base before it became operational. The Star Empire would then ambush and destroy all the starships with the over 100 newly refit vessels that they had at their command, their fleet itself being hidden in the Charon Nebula. But what the Star Empire didn't know was that Section 31, a Starfleet intelligence type organization, had gotten wind of the real plan and had secretly informed Captain Archer of the Romulans' true intentions. And in true Captain Jonathan Archer style, he would turn this Romulan trap to Starfleet's favor. Captain Archer would make it appear as though Starfleet was assembling its fleet in the nearby sector Gamma Hydra 12, having bought the Romulan ploy hook, line, and sinker. Using false sensor signals, Archer would make it appear as though all remaining NX-class refit vessels were also assembled there. 
But the truth was, Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Atlantis, and Endeavor took up positions in the star system surrounding Charon, cloaked from Romulan sensors by hastily copied Sulabon technology, prepared to warp to equidistant positions around the Charon Nebula on Archer's orders. Also, these NX-class refit vessels would be equipped with modified torpedoes, designed to ignite the nebula's ceruleum gas. These five starships would fire into the nebula before the Romulan ships could exit and respond using the nebula itself as a giant weapon to destroy as many of the Romulan ships as they could. Then the Starfleet Task Force from Gamma Hydra 12 would warp in to assist with the cleanup of the remaining Romulan vessels. The plan was a complete success, destroying almost 75% of the Romulans' attack force. The remaining vessels were then easily destroyed by Starfleet's task force. The battle, known as the Battle of Charon, would put an end to the war, forcing the Romulan Star Empire to surrender in a humiliating defeat, as the Star Empire no longer had a large enough space force to protect its borders, let alone Romulus itself. But Starfleet Command was really in no position itself to occupy any Romulan worlds, nor did it have a space force to police Romulan-occupied territory. And so, in a bluff of major proportions, Earth would hammer out a treaty with the Star Empire that would see the neutral zone, a buffer between what would become Federation space and Romulan territory established entry into which, by either side, would be considered an act of war. And this treaty would become the sole basis for why the United Federation of Planets and the Romulan Star Empire would never go to war again. As for the NX-class refit vessels, more would be constructed after the war, and once the United Federation of Planets was established in 2161, the NX-class refit vessels would become the test beds for combining a Federation member world donated technology and its integration. A process that would see this vessel class last well into the 2190s. But once the Malakowski and Walker classes began to make their presence felt throughout the Federation, Starfleet would finally decommission the class in the early 23rd century. Shortly after the Earth-Romulan War, the decision would be made to decommission the NX-01 Enterprise and place this trailblazing starship into the Fleet Museum, where it still shines today, with various holographic displays aboard the NX-01, paying tribute to the starship's history, as well as her original configuration when launched. Brought out as a desperate measure by Starfleet Command to win the war, the NX-class refit would not only turn the tide of that war, but would also go on to be a shining example of Federation exploration during the early days of that organization's history, earning the NX-class refit its important place in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching this updated episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the NX-class refit and the historical narrative that I've created here? Would you like to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel refit all its Starship designs to add a secondary haul? Then consider becoming a channel patron, a major help that allows this channel to purchase resources and 3D models to keep it going. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.